Welcome back everyone. If you're new to my channel, my name is Hannah, also known as Tropical Plant Addict. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Acacia Care, specifically the Cupria, but the care tips will apply to the majority of alocasia that you keep as houseplants. <laughs> After posting a few pictures of my alocasia Cupria the other day, I got quite a few messages and comments asking about care for them. So I thought I'd do a care tips video for you. Currently in my alocasia collection, I have the Cupria, I've got a Stingray, I have a Dragon Scale, and I also have a Black Velvet. I did have an Amazonica for a couple of years, but I decided to give it away so that I could collect a few more of the uncommon varieties as I ran out of room, as you can imagine. I love having alocasia in my collection. I think they're really rewarding to grow and you get some really unusual looking varieties and all the varieties look really different, which is something I really like about them. So the alocasia cupria, which translates to copper in Latin, is also known as the red secret, mirror plant and jewel alocasia. And it gets its name from the beautiful kind of coppery, purpley, metallic shine that it has on the leaves. The cupria is native to Borneo and it has the most beautiful and unusual foliage, as you can see. The leaves are firm with deep ridges and it almost feels like kind of plastic or leather, very kind of thick leathery leaves. And as you can see, it has this beautiful coppery, purpley, metallic shine to the foliage, which is what makes it so striking and unusual and obviously that's what's really drawn me to this plant. It looks completely different to all the plants that I've got in my collection. I think it is absolutely stunning. Definitely one of my favourite plants, hence why I've got a few of them now. So the leaves can emerge purple or green and then they develop into a darker green as they mature. So the back of the leaves are this lovely deep purple colour and the stems are kind of like a translucent green. You can actually get a green version of this plant as well. In regards to care for this plant, I seem to do pretty well with alocasia, so I thought I'd share some care tips with you and my personal experiences of them. So the alocasia cupria actually has a rhizome rooting system, which means it produces offshoots and kind of multiplies over time, which is really exciting as you can end up with multiple plants and you can divide them and propagate them quite easily. Uh, this little guy here is one that I took from my giant alocasia cupria, which you see here next to me. This one on my right hand side is a present for Zaheer, also known as Foliage Fanatic. This is his Christmas present. So in the last month since I've had these plants, this one here on the right has gotten one, two, three, four, five, six new leaves and it did produce two flowers. And this one here on my left, which is mine, has produced, I think, four new leaves. I think there's a fifth one on the way and it did produce one flower. So they've been quite happy here since I've been looking after them. They did drop a couple of leaves, which is quite normal when they do move to a new environment. And also they did both have um, spider mites when I first got them. So I've been wiping them both down once a week with my neem oil mix which is actually something I need to do today. It's watering day and treatment day, pamper day for the plants. So this cupria here I've had for almost two years. As you can see, it's looking pretty um, wild. It started off as one small plant with about four leaves or so. And I think it's got about 19 leaves now and I keep this one up in my office in a hanging basket. So as you can see, this is now two plants and then I can actually see another shoot here and another one here. So that is gonna actually be four plants eventually. I wouldn't recommend propagating plants during the winter, but when um, springtime comes around, I'm probably going to propagate this plant as it's getting a little bit uh, big for the pot. So you can't actually propagate this plant by leaf cutting. You have to divide it at the roots. It's pretty simple. You just literally pull um, one plant away from the other and as long as it's got some roots 
attached to it should be fine. So alocasia can actually go dormant in the winter, which means that they can drop a couple of leaves and then they won't really produce any new growth over the winter period. Or they can actually drop all of their leaves, which might look a bit scary and you think, oh no, my plant's died. It hasn't died, it's just gone dormant and it will come back in the spring. But I have found from experience that if you keep your alocasia in a warm and bright enough um, position, it actually won't go dormant. So, as I said, I've had this one for nearly two years and this has never gone dormant over winter. It's, well, as you can see, it's um, got quite a lot of leaves now. And my Alocasia Amazonica, which I had for a couple of years, that never went dormant until I moved it from the kitchen windowsill and I put it in the bedroom and it dropped all of its leaves and then it went dormant and that's when I actually gave it away and um, replaced it with something else. Not because it went dormant, I just wanted to get some new alocasia in my collection anyway. So I've had this stingray, I can't remember, over a year, year and a half maybe. Um, this one tends to only keep about three leaves at a time, which can be quite normal for some varieties of alocasia. They tend to um, drop a leaf as they produce a new one, not in all cases, but Again, this guy hasn't ever gone dormant either. This is my cute little black velvet. This one decided um, not to grow over the summer at all. And then all of a sudden, once the weather started getting quite cold, it's just produced um, another three leaves. So it seems okay. I, I thought it was gonna go dormant to be honest, but it has actually just produced some new growth, which is quite exciting. Again, I've had this one for a while as well. This is the newest alocasia in my collection. This is the Dragon Scale. Absolutely stunning. Just look at the, the veining on it. It's beautiful. And I love the texture of the leaves as well. They're quite, again, quite firm and leathery and just absolutely beautiful. And the back of the leaves are just as beautiful. They've got this deep purple veining, very pale with the contrasting veining. I bought this one in the summer and it came with two leaves and the newest leaves are this one and this one, which are the two largest leaves, which is a good sign. It means it's happy if it's producing larger growth. Alocasia can actually flower. Um, they produce like an inflorescence, but it's nothing spectacular. So generally if mine start producing a flower, I will actually trim them off so that it can focus its energy onto the leaves rather than the non-exciting flower. As I mentioned earlier, this plant is actually native to Borneo and it's found growing in the understory in the forests. So it's not getting a tremendous amount of light, probably a bit of dappled sun and filtered light through the trees. So this metallic shine that it has on the foliage actually helps it to absorb light through the canopy, which is really clever. So that's one reason the Alocasia cupria is a little bit different to other Alocasias in regard to how much light it requires, which I'll be going through with you next. So I tend to keep my Alocasia cupria in a medium to bright indirect light, whereas all my other Alocasia I keep in a bright indirect light with a tiny bit of filtered sun. So all the other Alocasia I just showed you, I keep these on my kitchen windowsill, which is a east facing windowsill and it receives bright indirect light with a little bit of sun throughout the day, a little bit of morning sun or afternoon sun. Oh, Marvin's come to say hello. He's in a bit of a funny mood today, so I'm hoping he doesn't um, attack me. So as I mentioned, the metallic sheen on the leaves actually helps the cupria absorb light, so it can be kept in slightly lower light conditions. So my smaller cupria, which is this one, lives up in my office and it lives quite far away from a west facing window. I would say it's receiving medium light and it seems pretty happy there to be honest and I've had it there for about 10 months. So I'm a bit scared to move it anywhere else now because it does seem so happy. So I'm gonna just keep it there for now and see how it does over the winter. This beast on my left at the moment, I'm keeping about, I'd say three or four feet away from a west facing window. It's quite near a humidifier and it's receiving kind of 
medium to bright indirect light. I would recommend avoiding strong sunlight as this can actually burn the foliage of your alocasia, especially the alocasia with thinner and more delicate leaves such as the stingray that I've got here. All the other alocasia I've got are quite leathery and have got quite thick leaves and they're not really prone to burning as much as the stingray. In regards to watering, I'll water my alocasia once a week with room temperature filtered water. I obviously cut down on the watering during the winter, but how much and how often you water will depend on your home environment. I do tend to keep my house quite warm throughout the year. It's usually around, I'd say about 25 degrees Celsius throughout the year. I just looked at my hygrometer in the corner and it does actually read 26 degrees Celsius in this room, but this is generally the warmest room in the house. Uh, my office is actually quite warm as well, but in the kitchen it is a little bit colder. Alocasia do tend to be quite thirsty plants due to the rhizome rooting system, but if you're not quite sure if your alocasia needs watering, just stick your finger a few inches into the soil to feel if it's moist or not. If it's still moist, I would recommend leaving it a bit longer before you're watering your alocasia. If it's bone dry, it probably definitely needs a water. I would recommend um, leaving them to dry out a little bit in between watering. As I mentioned before, how much and how often you water will depend on your home environment, how much light your alocasia is receiving, how warm your house is. If your alocasia has dropped all its leaves for the winter period, if you're keeping it in a warm and bright location, you can give it a tiny bit of water every now and again. If you do tend to move your dormant plants out of sight during the winter, um, somewhere a bit colder and a bit um, less light, I wouldn't recommend watering them at all as that could lead to root rot. I would also recommend you keeping your alocasia away from any kind of central heating, air vents, any cold or drafty areas as they do like a nice warm and humid environment. In regards to humidity, I do tend to keep my house around 60% humidity, although alocasia do appreciate quite a warm and humid environment. So. If you have got a more humid environment, then they will really appreciate that. But I do find that they tend to kind of adapt to your home environment over time. As I mentioned before, I do keep my house quite warm during the winter. It generally ranges from maybe 22 to 26 degrees Celsius. And I do have a couple of humidifiers in my house. I've got one down here in the living room and then one upstairs in my office. I'm using the Alec Holmes humidifier. I was sent it a couple of months ago and it is absolutely brilliant. I'm actually gonna get another one for my office to replace my other humidifier just because it's so easy to use and fill. It's a top fill humidifier. So you don't have to mess around with like lifting out the water tank and trying to, obviously when it comes to cleaning, you don't have to get in and try and clean the inside of it or anything. It's so easy to refill and clean so i will leave a link to the humidifier down in the description box for you and i've added all the products that i use into my amazon shop so i don't tend to mist the leaves of my alocasia as i've got the humidifiers but if you are misting the leaves i would recommend just uh, using a very very fine mist um, because you'll find if you're getting too much water on the leaves it can lead to uh, fungal issues Unfortunately, alocasia are prone to bugs such as spider mites and thrips. As I mentioned before, my giant alocasia had spider mites when I first got it and this one as well. Um, so I do tend to wipe down all the leaves of my alocasia every week or so with my Nemo mix, which I'll leave in the description box for you. And that also gives the leaves a lovely shine. Because alocasia prefer more of a moist soil, I do tend to dress the top of the soil with fine gravel. And this will help um, deter fungus gnats. We all know that they love a bit of uh, moist soil. Um, you can also use sticky traps as well if you like, but I found that just dressing the top of the soil with fine gravel um, will prevent uh, fungus gnats. As you can see, they can grow a little bit wild. Sometimes they'll kind of grow towards the light. Um, they can get a bit leggy sometimes. Um, so you can actually stake them with a moss pole or a bamboo stick. I think I might actually have to stake this one because it's getting a little bit top heavy now. In regards to soil mix for your alocasia, I tend to use a well-draining uh, potting mix and I make this up from coir compost, uh, perlite, orchid bark, a little bit of charcoal, although I don't make it too chunky for my alocasia as they prefer more of a moist soil. 
I will um, include a link to my soil mix video below for you. You can actually tailor the mix to any plant, so you can make it like super chunky or a bit more of a moist kind of mix. For example, for my philodendrons, I add quite a lot more of the orchid bark in to make it really, really chunky. I have actually repotted the majority of my alocasia, but my cuprias are still in their original soil mix. But as I mentioned, this one desperately needs repotting. There's like four plants in this tiny pot now, but I'm going to wait till spring. I wouldn't recommend uh, repotting or propagating um, during the winter months. I'd wait until spring or summer. I fertilize my alocasia every two to three weeks in the growing season with my Baby Bio liquid fertilizer. But I'd say any well-balanced fertilizer should be fine. I would absolutely love to add some more alocasia to my houseplant collection. And I've got a little list here of some of the alocasia that I've got on my wish list. The first one is Silver Dragon, which is a little bit similar to the Dragon Scale, uh, but the leaves look paler with a more dramatic veining. It's really, really beautiful. So I'm hoping to add a Silver Dragon to my collection soon. I've got the Alocasia Mellow, which is also known as the Rugosa, and that has quite compact Kind of smaller leaves and they're very thick and leathery and I just love the texture and the veining on it it's really really beautiful um, so that's definitely one I want to add to my collection I've got the Alocasia Fry Deck um, I also really like the variegated version of that one the Alocasia Black Magic which is another metallic uh, foliage variety really really beautiful the leaves um, are kind of like a deep purple, almost black. Definitely want to add that one to my collection. And then the last one I've got on my list is the Alocasia Green Shield. Again, this is another variety that's got a striking veining and it's just really beautiful. Let me know in the comments below what Alocasia you've got in your collection and if you've got any interesting varieties on your wish list. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If I've missed anything out, I'll include it in the description box. I hope everyone's having a really great week. If you're in lockdown again, like we are here in the UK, I hope you're enjoying your plants and your time at home. My uh, Christmas tree just arrived a few days ago, so I'm really excited to put that up next week and I'm hoping to make a video. Take care, everyone. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all soon in the next video. Bye.